a sequence Sn, and after a while I start calling this the parent sequence. So this is a sequence as in the way that we're used, used to thinking about them. Then to select a subsequence out of a parent sequence is the same as just selecting some infinite collection of its terms. We don't have to choose all of them. We probably aren't choosing all of them, but we're choosing some infinite collection of their terms that continues all the way towards infinity. Um, and the definition is a little bit weird um, because it creates this distinction that's really important not to mix up. The distinction between the indices of the terms that we're choosing and the indices that we choose have to form themselves an increasing sequence. But those are just the indexes, the numbers, the ends that we choose. The subsequence itself is the terms of the parent sequence that have those indices. So to come back to this example for a second, um, if my red sequence is my parent sequence, so here's S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, and so forth, then the green highlighted terms here are the first four terms in a subsequence. That would be the fifth term of the original sequence, the ninth term, the 15th term, the 23rd term, and so on. So in this example, I guess how I like to think of it is this. If my original sequence can be written in a data table, Sn, so here's the first term, here's the second term, term number four, term number five, term number six, term number seven, term number eight, term number nine, and so on and so on. And then maybe the first term is 2.1, the second term is uh, 2, the third term is 1, the fourth term is 2 again, the fifth term is 3.5, the sixth term is, I'm just making up some numbers here. Well, let's see, seventh term looks like it might be, uh, I don't know, 1, the eighth term is 2 again, and the next ninth term is 3.2, whatever. Right? So this is the original sequence. All of these are my red dots, if you like. Um, then choosing a subsequence means that I'm just going in and I'm cherry picking some terms. Okay. So the first term in my subsequence is the fifth term in my parent sequence. The second term in my subsequence is the ninth term in my parent sequence, and so on. So I'm just cherry picking. I'm just selecting some of the terms of the original. And where the notation, and this is where analysis gets a bad rap for notation, uh, a well-deserved bad rap for notation. Where the notation gets challenging is that what we often do is we introduce a new index, we call it k, and the goal of this new index is to index which term in the subsequence that we happen to be talking about. So the first term in my subsequence is the fifth term in my original parent sequence. The second term in my subsequence is the ninth term in my original parent sequence, and so on. And so what it does is it kind of creates a new sequence that we call the sequence of indices. So these are the n sub k's, if you like. n sub 1 is equal to 5. n sub 2 is equal to 9, and so on. So that's where those indices come from. And the indices have to be chosen as an increasing sequence. So I can't change the order of my terms in the parent sequence when I create a subsequence. Any term which came before another one in the original sequence also has to come before that term in the parent sequence. So in the definition of subsequence, we require that the indices, the first index of the subsequence, the second index of the subsequence, and so on, that has to be an increasing sequence. So we can't turn around the order of the terms in a parent sequence when we make a subsequence out of it. Um, this is one of these subsequences, a classic example, I think, in mathematics of a definition that's intuitive to understand, but when it comes time to actually write it down in an airtight, rigorous fashion, as definitions do, um, the, the, the technicality risks obscuring the meaning. Uh, so don't let that happen <laughs> to the extent possible. Um, just realize that all we're doing when we pick a subsequence is choosing some infinite collection of terms in that sequence uh, and just ordering them in the same way that they were ordered in the original sequence. Sarah makes the point in this comment that in this example, I was choosing a sequence of green terms which looked like they were decreasing monotonically. And I did that by just looking at the graph and saying, oh, well, if I choose the fifth and then the ninth and then the, what is this, the 15th and then the 23rd, if I choose those terms, then I'm going to get a sequence which is decreasing. And Sarah asks, well, uh, how, how would we know how to do this without the graph? Uh, is there a way to know, for example, that I can choose a decreasing sequence from out of a random sequence that might be written down for me without having a graph to know how to do it? Uh, and the answer is, uh, I don't think there's a great way to do this without a graph, um, though there is a theorem in the next section that we'll see. It's actually a theorem that lived back in our original section on Cauchy sequences. Um, actually, a pretty surprising theorem. Let me jump back for a second. 
and take a look at what it says. Do do is actually a lemma. Uh, the lemma at the bottom of our Cauchy sequences uh, material. And the lemma says that any sequence which is, uh, da, 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 actually any sequence at all, that makes this a really interesting result because there's not much that we can say about sequences overall. Usually we need some additional property in there. But this lemma says that any sequence of real numbers will have a subsequence of it which is monotonic. So it says even though we might not know how to find that subsequence, which is monotonic, we will always be guaranteed to have one. So whether we need to look at a graph to do it, whether we need to use a data table, whether we need to use some other sort of <coughs> algorithm to find it, um, we're guaranteed by this lemma that a monotonic subsequence will always exist. No matter how crazy, no, no matter how ill-behaved the parent sequence is, this lemma guarantees that one of its subsequences will be monotonic. <coughs> 